The order for Holy Communion begins on page three of your service bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. O Almighty Lord and everlasting God, vouchsafe we beseech thee to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments. That through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The epistle is taken from the first epistle general of the apostle St. Peter, beginning in the 19th verse. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards God endured grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it, if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Here endeth the epistle.
Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter, the Gospel according to St. John, beginning with the 11th verse. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an ironling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine, even as the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The Gospel of our Lord. If you are able, please remain standing. Will all members of the Daughters of the Holy Cross and the candidate please come forward? Each member of the Order of the Daughters of the Holy Cross wears this cross, the symbol of the order. Before each one takes her vow and receives her cross, we ask you to bless it. Holy and gracious God, we ask you to bless this cross, that it may be an outward symbol to all who see it, that the one who wears it has dedicated her life to you. Every day as she puts on her cross, May she be reminded of your faithful care and provision for her as your daughter. We ask this through the mediation of your Son, who redeemed us by his sacrifice on the Holy Cross. I present to you Cheryl Ivers, who has completed the period of study and discernment and desires to become a member of the Order of the Daughters of the Holy Cross. For three months, you have studied, prayed, and searched the scriptures 
and your heart to confirm the call you received from Jesus to be admitted to this order dedicated to prayer, service, study, and evangelism. Do you believe you have been so called? Have you read and do you affirm the faith statement of the order? I have read and affirmed the faith statement. Cheryl Ivers, will you live by the rule of life of the order and willingly take the fourfold vow of prayer, service, study, and evangelism? Yes, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pledge faithful obedience to the rule of life of the order and solemnly do I take the vow of prayer, service, Receive and wear the cross of the order as an outward symbol of your vow. As a member of the order of the Daughters of the Holy Cross, will you do everything in your power to promote harmony and to further the mission and ministry of the order? I will with God's help. My sister, prayer is the foundation of all God's work. As you enter the order of the Daughters of the Holy Cross, I thank you for the difference your prayers will make to how that work is done in this part of his church. May you find joy and fulfillment as a member of this order, and may you be blessed as your, in your life of prayer, service, study, and evangelism blesses those whom God places in your path. Now with your sisters, join in the prayer of the order. Amen. And now, congregation, let us recognize this new member of the Daughters of the Holy Cross. You may be seated. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, good morning and welcome. Glad to have you here at Church of the Holy Communion today. We especially welcome those who are visiting, those who are joining us by live stream. If you are a guest today, we do invite you to either sign the guest book in the narthex or there are some visitor cards in the pew back in front of you. If you'd fill that out, place it in the offering plate as you leave. Uh, We'd like to get to know you better. Uh, There also is a visitor packet. Uh, When you walk out of the door on the right, there's a little, uh, whatever you call it, a hutch. uh, And you can get one of those packets and take with you, tell you a little bit more about our church. We're back on a regular schedule, sort of, uh, back to Bible studies. And of course, as you know, our Bible studies, most of them are being offered both in person and by Zoom. Uh, Wednesday services, noon Eucharist, uh, also uh, even song at 6.30, uh, and that's followed by a short Bible study. And our youth program is back up and running, so I hope our youth will come back out to that. Just a few other uh, events to kind of look forward to. On Monday, May the 3rd, we have Theology on Tap, so men take note of that. On Sunday, May the 9th, HCW is going to be sponsoring a Mother's Day bake sale, and it'll be uh, over in the parish hall. We'll have the doors open so you can come over and enjoy some of those wonderful treats. On May the 23rd, uh, which is Whitsunday, Pentecost, Uh, That will be our official bishop's visit. So we'll have our confirmations that day. Uh, And I don't know if you read my Caroline article this week, but it's also going to be the day when we reinstitute our fellowship time between the services. So the parish hall will be opened after the nine o'clock service. We will have a cake uh, and coffee. And so we'll be back to that. We will have the doors open. So if you're not comfortable coming inside, you can stand out in the patio area out here. If we keep having some more of this weather, that would be great. But uh, we are reinstituting our fellowship hour, uh, so we do look forward to that coffee hour, the eighth sacrament of the church. Uh, That'll be coming then. Uh, uh, On a sad note, our condolences go out to uh, Helen Omereggi and her children. Uh, Her husband, Michael, went to be with the Lord. He was in Nigeria. He went to be with the Lord this week. And uh, so we will remember Michael this morning at the altar. But please keep Helen 
uh, and their children uh, in your prayers. A tough time for them. Well, if you have a birthday or an anniversary this week or this past week, we invite you to stand where you are. We'd like to pray for you. We're going to pray for others out uh, uh, in the Zoom world who are joining us uh, online for birthdays and anniversaries. Let us pray together the prayer on the bottom of page six. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you all. Congratulations. Let us continue our worship now by standing and singing the sermon hymn on page 7, Good Shepherd, Lead Thy Weary Sheep. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Shepherds and sheep. Many of us can go a lifetime without encountering them. 
But in Jesus' day, they were surrounded by this image perpetually. Our lessons for this Sunday teach us that Jesus is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. His goodness is defined where he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In this analogy, we are likened to sheep. It should be noted that sheep are not the brightest bulbs in the pack. <clears throat> they need constant care and are prone to wander, hence the constant need for a shepherd. Just yesterday, I saw an internet video where two boys found a sheep wedged into a crevice that he would never have gotten out of. I mean, he was in there tight. One of the boys grabbed the sheep by his back leg and after some intense tugging, was able to get him out. The sheep was thrilled and he bounded off. And about 20 yards away, he sought to jump over the crevice and what do you know, right back into the crevice. Back in the same state where the boys found him to begin with. This is why the analogy works. Because just like that sheep, we are in constant need of rescue by the Good Shepherd. However, there is a positive quality of sheep which is brought out in our text. They have the ability to learn the voice of their shepherd and to distinguish it from the voices of others. Jesus makes note of this quality three times in the 10th chapter of St. John's Gospel. At the opening of the chapter, Jesus talks about the shepherd coming to the sheepfold, essentially a pen. And when the doorkeeper opens the pen, the sheep hear the shepherd's voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. In the portion of the chapter which we read today, Jesus adds, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Then towards the end of the chapter, Jesus summarizes this truth where he says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So Jesus is the good shepherd, and we are his sheep. And one of the positive qualities of sheep is their ability to learn and recognize their shepherd's voice and to follow it. Which begs the question, where and how can we hear the voice of Jesus? I would note three ways. First, the good shepherd speaks through his written word. Holy Scripture is inspired by God. The Old Testament prepares the way for and foretells the coming of Jesus. The Gospels give us four portraits of his blessed life and record many of his teaching sessions. And the rest of the New Testament reflects on what his life and teachings mean for the church. In short, the Bible's about Jesus. If you want to hear the voice of Jesus, you must begin by engaging with his word. Now, I know we beat the drum about this a lot around here, but there really is no substitute for this. St. Peter recognized this at one point when he said to Jesus, you have the words of eternal life. Would that we would learn that. 
If we would hear the good shepherd's voice, then we must have a regular way of hearing him speak. This begins, of course, with coming to worship and hearing him speak through the lessons. And it should carry over into a daily encounter with the Bible. We must make time for this. Read a chapter of the Old Testament and a chapter of the New Testament each day. Or download one of the recordings of the Bible, many that are found on online that can be readily found. You can just download that and listen to the Bible as you walk or as you wash dishes or whatever you're doing. Whatever works best for you, find a way to hear the voice of Jesus through engaging Holy Scripture. Second, the Good Shepherd speaks through his faithful ministers. Now, in reality, this is simply a corollary of the first point because his ministers are supposed to read and study the Bible and then explain it to his people. The vows in the ordination services of the prayer book reflect this. The diaconal candidate is asked, are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain all doctrine required as necessary for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And this is followed up by, will you diligently read the same unto the people assembled in the church? Likewise, the deacon who is taking the next step of being ordained as a priest is admonished to the daily reading of the scriptures so that he may wax riper and stronger in his ministry and that he may order his life according to the same so that he might be a wholesome and godly example and pattern for the people to follow. And even the one who would be consecrated as bishop vows to faithfully exercise himself in the Holy Scriptures and to call upon God for the true understanding of the same in order that he might be able to teach and exhort with wholesome doctrine and to withstand and convince gainsayers. When you come to worship and hear a sermon, it is intended to be nothing less than an explanation and application of what Holy Scripture teaches. Ministers are called to feed the flock, not entertain the goats. We're called to teach what the Word of God says. We're not to be given over to the latest headlines in the news, the latest ideas of pop culture, or our own political convictions. We are instructed to teach only what is consistent with the words of our Good Shepherd. Third and finally, the Good Shepherd sometimes speaks to us through a still, small voice in our hearts and minds. Now this idea is admittedly a bit trickier. How do we discern when we believe that the Lord Jesus is speaking to us? Well, there are a lot of people who go around saying something like, the Lord told me, fill in the blank. Now, while I have no doubt that the Lord speaks to us, I'm a bit leery when I hear this sort of thing. The first thing that I think of when I hear this, and I would encourage you to do the same, is whether what this person says, what they say that they heard, or whether what I think I've heard is consistent with what the Bible plainly teaches. This is a basic and infallible rule. Christ will never tell us to do something that is contrary to what he has already told us in his word. So if you think that you've heard Christ say something to you that does not seem to coincide with what the Bible says, then you should reject it because he's not telling you that. After all, there are other voices out there who would seek to lead us astray. To circle back, this is all the more reason why we need to know the contents of the Bible so that we can discern what the Good Shepherd is saying to us 
and recognize falsehoods when we hear them. So on this Good Shepherd Sunday, we are reminded that Jesus speaks to his sheep and we must learn to recognize and respond to his word. Our shepherd loves us, so much so that he laid down his life for us. Let us learn to listen for the voice of Jesus in his word, from his faithful ministers, and in his still small voice. For he will always lead us in the right way. Amen. And now let us remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. 
Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Michael, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and at all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying.
All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
And now a prayer of spiritual communion for those who are joining us by live stream. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Glory be to God on high.
Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.